So now let's continue our work with literacy and gender. And we're going to take a look in specific uh, here at how some considerations toward how girls tend to operate might influence our decision making when it comes to developing their literacy. Interestingly, the classroom environment, uh, it, it weighs quite a bit on their operation within a classroom. They want it to be cozy and comfortable. Collaborative work is big. Uh, so is a loving and supportive kind of, you know, signs of motivation and engagement around the room. Uh, a little encouragement is always helpful. 74 degrees, if you can imagine, that is the ultimate classroom temperature setting. I personally would fall asleep. And generally, girls prefer it to be quiet and calm and organized. Now, interestingly, girls arrive in the classroom with a lot of energy, but also they strive simultaneously to resolve uncertainties, uh, often seeking reassurance in terms of how is this going to be graded? What are the procedures? How much homework will there be to get that right? As it pertains to trying something different and it might go wrong, whereas boys commonly accept that risk, girls more predominantly will become flustered or even perturbed about it. As it pertains to, again, girls' preferences, do be mindful of the tone and volume of your voice. Often, loud voices are perceived as yelling and causes them to shut down. Generally, more assurance, more reiterative support to develop a sense of security is important. We don't want our gals to become invisible. Uh, they're more inclined to hide or to be quiet. They tend to respond to direct questions more explicitly and become, you know, maybe even more compliant. We don't want them necessarily to defer to these uh, opinions or voices. We want to encourage them to take some risks. Interestingly, girls don't tend to see the world as objects in motion. Their eyes are drawn actually to warmer colors, the reds, the yellows, the oranges, as well as textures or visuals. How might you be able to harness that within your classroom? On the thinking side of things, girls' <laughs> corpus callosum, this connecting bundles of tissues that go across the hemispheres is up to 25% larger than boys. And that's by adolescence. Why is that important to us? Well, that means more crosstalk between the hemispheres. And that's important because there is no reading center for the brain. There's a language center. There's an optic center, and those need to work in concert with one another in order to make sense of the text they're reading. We know they have stronger neural connectors in their temporal lobes, right? More detailed memory storage, better listening skills, better discrimination among the various tones of voice. And this leads to much greater detail in their use of and development of writing. The memory story area, their hippocampus, is also larger. This increases actually girls' learning advantage overall, especially in the language arts. Add to that that they generally have more cortical area uh, used in their brain for verbal and emotive functioning, and it's no wonder their writing is generally more descriptive. Now, I know we've talked about multitasking as a possibility or maybe just a myth, but girls can keep those things going better than others. Again, that might have to do something with the crosstalk. Girls also have fewer attention span problems and can make faster transitions between lessons. They are less likely to compartmentalize. These aforementioned girls' cortical areas make them better at things such as sensory memory, sitting still, listening, deciphering tone, mental crosstalk, and the complexities of reading and writing. So I'd like you to consider those differences. And then I'd like you to once again think, what gets rewarded in school? Now, girls significantly outperform boys in reading ability across all grades, with a tendency toward a larger effect size in high school than in primary school. Very interestingly, the likelihood of being average or higher in readability for a student at the end of high school increases from 42% for boys to 58% for girls. We know that girls score higher, uh, significantly higher uh, on standardized measures of reading achievement in grades K through 12. Throughout their elementary and middle school, girls consistently score about two-tenths of a standard deviation above boys. 
This means they're about one to one and a half grade levels ahead of their boys' counterparts in both reading and writing. According to Allred, uh, 1990, there's a significant difference in the spelling abilities between boys and girls. In their study, they had uh, boys and girls participate in two different standardized tests. The objective of the test was to identify misspelled words as well as spell words out. At all grade levels, girls identified the correct spelling of substantially more words on the CTBS and spelled substantially more words correct on the WST. On average, girls are more motivated than boys to perform well in school, at least during elementary school. And by the time they reach high school, however, some might even start to downplay their academic ability to make themselves more likable. It does not affect their grades. From kindergarten through 12th grade, girls earn slightly higher average grades than boys. Of note for your classroom application, girls read more quickly than boys. Girls also tend to comprehend narrative text and most expository text significantly better than boys. Let's take a look at a couple of these graphs. This first one here identifies that girls are better readers than boys. At least that is the opinion that they are weighing in on. Take a look at the results. Now take a look at the results for do you like to read? Notice the difference in not only grade level, but also from the gender perspective. As it pertains to choice, girls do not tend to resist reading stories about boys. Poetry is more popular with girls, and they tend to read much more fiction. So what are some of our takeaways? Well, we might consider the following. Incorporate cooperative learning. Assign some long-term projects and allow for a vast amount of verbal expression, both written and spoken. Assign projects that include writing stories and provide opportunities to discuss what's been taught. Note-taking and reading will meet them where they thrive, as well as opportunities to read fiction when appropriate in your disciplinary areas. Encouragement goes well and mind mapping will be highly successful.